We better get to the markets because we're in rally mode this morning. We've lost a little bit of the gain for the Dow, but it's still up 80 odd points. And the Nasdaq's still up 50. David Barnson is with us. All right, David, I read your stuff. You know I do. <laughs> That's how I got Blackstone. Uh, I read your stuff, and you're saying, forget the Fed. Now, well, what's that all about? That's heresy in this market. Yeah, I think, I think it's really important that I clarify. The Fed is so instrumental right now in the overall economy. We don't have the option to forget the Fed. And I'm stating that as a very unfortunate reality. The economy should be moving off of entrepreneurs. It should be moving off of human action. And the idea that right now the Fed is the centerpiece where we all have to wait on pins and needles for what one man or a group of people with PhDs sitting around a conference table do is not right. And so the economy is built in a dependency on heavy monetary interventions. I think it's very unhealthy. It's the way Japan has been for a long time. And I think investors need to understand that there's a lot of distortions in the market. Uh, you're talking about the mortgage rates you were paying when you were buying your houses earlier and so forth. Look, th th they're dependent on this. The housing market cannot afford, forget 14, 15%. That was a rare period, but five, six, 7%. We can't ever go back there. The mm -hmm. government can't afford the financing cost on its own debt. So what you've done is a whole lot of distortions throughout financial markets. And, and I think it's mispriced risk and reward. Investors have got to understand that. It comes to an end at some point though doesn't it i mean the fed cannot and central banks around the world you can't just keep on printing forever or can you well the thing is is that they're not printing they're adding to their balance yeah. sheet and there's maintain as assets and liabilities it gets complicated but the the money supply has gone higher but the velocity of the money it turning over loan demand is staying very low so the Fed has to do more of what they're doing to get less and less of a result from it. And that's sort of the kind of hair of the dog economics that we're living in right now. OK, um, I do want to thank you again for uh, alerting me to Blackstone a couple of years ago. You told me you suggested I buy it at 30 when it was yielding 6 percent. And as you can see on the screen, it's now one hundred and twenty eight dollars and yielding under 3%. I don't mind about the under 3% yield. I'm very interested in that capital gain. Did you see that capital gain coming, David? Yeah, and, I, and by the way, I see more capital gain coming, okay? And I really need to clarify something. When you bought it at $28.51 in the fourth quarter of 2018, it was, it, right now, the yield that it's paying out on that price is 11%. The only reason the yield is showing at two and a half is because the stock price has gone up. Yeah. The yield, the dividend, the distribution is higher now than it was then. For me, when I bought it in 2011, I'm getting the, di the dividend has grown 400 percent in the last 10 years. And this is what I want investors to understand about Blackstone, about Apollo. When they passed Dodd-Frank after the financial crisis, they took away a lot of investing activity from the Morgan Stanleys, the Goldman Sachs, the big investment banks. The private equity firms have filled that void. They have the talent. They have the deal guys. Private equity, credit, real estate, hedge funds. They're raising money hand over fist. It's fee-based businesses. And guys like Stuart Varney are making the investment returns off of that thesis, and I'm sticking to it. I'm almost embarrassed by it, to be absolutely honest with you. I am, but there you have it. I'll take the money. David, good stuff. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.